Hello again, uh, continuing our lecture series, easy lecture series, uh, lecture series on realistic modeling and simulation of earthquakes, soils, structures, and their interaction. Uh, it's early, early July. Uh, we're all back in Davis. I managed to get back from Europe in one piece, uh, took a while. Uh, uh, today, again, joining me, uh, joining me or actually presenting today is Dr. Han Young. Hello. And joining us also is is, uh, is Mr. Hessian Wang. Hi. And uh, today we're going to talk uh, about uh, calibration of uh, fiber models for concrete modeling for uh, 1D concrete modeling for fibers, which then goes into axial loading or bending loading. So, uh, Dr. Yang, uh, please take it over and share your screen. Yes. Okay. Right. Full Good. screen and here. Okay, can I see it? Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Professor Boris. Uh, and uh, good morning, actually. Good afternoon, everyone. I saw, yeah, it's already uh, past five. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> All right. Yes. So, uh, it, uh, in this video, we are going to talk about the uh, calibration of a uh, uniaxial concrete material model for a reinforced <clears throat> concrete beam uh, or column elements. So uh, again, uh, we have uh, talked about this uh, uniaxial concrete material model uh, in our uh, earlier videos. So the uh, uh, keyword in uh, real easy is the uniaxial uh, concrete O2 material. Uh, this is the, the, the same material model also used in uh, OpenSea. So if you have done this uh, calibration uh, or used this material model before, you can use the exact, ex exact same set of parameters here uh, in real easy as well. So uh, just a brief uh, review of the model itself. So it was uh, developed by uh, Yasin in uh, 1994. So it's capable of modeling the uh, nonlinear hysterical behavior and the uh, damage effects uh, in concrete. So as you can see this plot uh, over here, it, re it uh, represents a typical behavior of the model itself. So there's the uh, monotonic behavior. Uh, there's also the uh, cyclic behavior so the cyclic behavior is mainly controlled by this one parameter uh, named the lambda, uh, which is defined, uh, as, uh, which is used to define uh, the inter in intersection of all the uh, unloading paths. So uh, here are some more uh, equations, uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to go too detail uh, into those equations. If you're interested, please go to our menu uh, to for more more uh, theoretical background for the model itself. So. Uh, Mainly, I'm going to talk about the uh, real easy uh, domain specific language or DSL for this material model here. So uh, this material model uh, can be added into uh, your uh, into your beam or your column using the command add material number. Uh, the type is this keyword uniaxial uh, underscore concrete O2. So here are the list of material parameters you're going to use for this model. Uh, the first of uh, four uh, parameters. Uh, those parameters are for a monotonic compressive behavior. Uh, they can be directly uh, determined from physical experiments. So as you can see, those uh, the name of the parameters are pretty uh, are pretty self-explanatory. So there are the uh, compressive strength, the uh, strength strain at uh, compressive strength, uh, the crushing strength, and also strain at crushing strength. So later, uh, uh, there are some plots to better uh, explain uh, those numbers. And then here are, we have the lambda parameter that is used uh, to define the, uh, the cyclic behavior. And then uh, we have the two uh, tensile parameters that is used to, uh, to, to define the monotonic tensile behavior. Uh, they are also already determined uh, from physical experimental tests. So uh, I want to mention that here, the parameter lambda controls uh, the cyclic behavior of the model, uh, if the cyclic behavior of uh, the response of the model is important, uh, we uh, highly recommend you do more physical tests involving uh, cyclic loading to better calibrate uh, this lambda value. So here is a uh, example showing uh, the behavior of the model and how you can use it uh, for your for modeling the beam uh, reinforced concrete beams of columns. So uh, you're already going to use the concrete material together with the steel. Uh, we have talked about the steel model and parameters in our previous video. 
So here are the concrete. Uh, usually you are going to define a confined concrete and the unconfined concrete. They are the same material model, but you already used uh, different uh, parameters to, 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 to capture different behaviors. Yes. So as you can see, uh, first, you, already, you wanna uh, calibrate the monotonic behavior. So those are these uh, four compressive parameters uh, and those two uh, tensile. Uh, parameters. So here uh, again, we are using uh, a test done uh, by uh, Professor Hazelton in 2008. Uh, so this are the black line is his uh, uh, test behavior, and uh, the red one is a real easy simulation result. As you can see, uh, we can pretty much uh, have a perfect match uh, once you define all the parameters. So here, the compressive strength defines the uh, stress at this peak level here, uh, the strain at compressive, uh, uh, so, so the, uh, sorry, let me just go back a little bit. So compressive strength, as you can see here, it says about uh, 44, 45 uh, megapascal, which is exactly what we get at this point right here. And then you have the strain at com com compressive strength that defines the uh, horizontal here, the strain, as you can see, is defined as basically uh, 0 0.0028, which is about 0.28%, uh, which is the same uh, exactly what we have right here. Uh, because those are compressive numbers, so there should be a negative sign. Yes. So just pay, pay attention to that. Yes. Uh, and also, so as, as yes. I, if, if I may say, strength of materials conventions apply throughout real easy and, and uh, so negative means compression, positive means tension. And right. the units for strains are strain has no units, so this is meter per meter. This is this is what it is. And then of course for stress, for strength you can use pascals, kilopascals, megapascals, you name it. But but it, you have to have a unit. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, yes. Exactly. And similarly, we have the uh, the strength and strain at uh, the crushing at, at basic or uh, other uh, some other times that are named uh, like ultimate strength. So for for example. Here we have about uh, nine megapascal of crushing strength, which is exactly what we have at this point. So this is where you reach the ultimate strength or the crushing strength. And the, the strain when you reach that is 0 0.028, which is about 2.8%. Uh, so this is what we have. So after you put all those parameters, uh, similarly you can do the same thing for the tensile side. So after you define all the parameters, basically you pinpointed all those uh, controlling point for the monotonic behavior of your model. Uh, similarly, we can do the same thing uh, for the unconfined concrete. Uh, when you put different material parameters, you've got a different behavior. As you can see, we have a lower uh, compressive strength, a uh, lower tensile, uh, actually similar tensile stress. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but much faster uh, decay when you are on the compressive side. So, and also you have zero uh, crushing strength or zero ultimate strength because the concrete itself is uh, uh, unconfined. So as you can yeah. see, by defining different material parameters, you can simulate uh, confined, unconfined, like a wide range of different material behaviors here. And then uh, after you got the uh, monotonic behavior, uh, you can use the parameter lambda to uh, to kind of calibrate your cyclic behavior. So this is the, the next step we, we did for this example. So as you can see here again, we are using the, the test uh, results uh, from uh, Professor Hazelton in 2008. Uh, as you can see by, so this parameter lambda controls the unloading and the reloading behavior of this model. So if you change that, definitely you're gonna get a different uh, stress, like different hysteretic loop a different uh, behavior. So here by using the number 0 0.08, uh, we can get a pretty good match against uh, this uh, result from literature. So you can always change that if you have more data. And uh, again, uh, as, we, uh, as we mentioned in our other videos, uh, this behavior sometimes is uh, very much uh, is very much uh, probabilistic, so you, you sometimes need to uh, define the uncertainties of those parameters as well. Uh, so here are the references we use uh, for uh, this example and for this video. I'd like to acknowledge my collaborators and uh, foundings and collaboration from the funding agencies. And again, uh, as always, for more information, please go to uh, our Real Easy website uh, for more uh, information, for more examples and uh, explanations, videos, everything else you need. 
Uh, and with that, uh, thank you. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. So, so ju just just one note. Uh, so you mentioned the probabilistic response. So essentially, all these parameters are have their own distributions, and we'll we'll spend a little time going through that uh, maybe next week. Uh, Hessian is going to talk about that, how to model, not necessarily for concrete, but essentially for 1D wave propagation and so on. Uh, but again, a, a good good thing to do also is to start with some parameters that you have and then maybe do a sensitivity study. Again, that requires time. And then see if which parameters do make a difference, big, significant, well, depending on how you define significant difference in your response. So in this case, it's just 1D, so that's fine. But But later on, when you go to fully blown structure and soil, you can do a small parametric sensitivity study to see which parameters do change uh, significantly the actual response. Uh, well, with that, uh, yes. so if you stop sharing your screen, we'll, uh, mm -hmm. we'll essentially say uh, thank you and goodbye all and I'll stop recording and thank you very much. We'll meet again uh, next time for next set, set of lectures. Thank you.